Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and this episode of otrwesterns.com is brought to you by Edwards Heritage Consulting. Edwards Heritage Consulting focuses on helping you discover your heritage and roots, and is passionate about family, heritage architecture, and genealogy. For more information, contact Helen by email, heritagelady at gmail.com. Again, that's heritagelady at gmail.com. Let her know you found her from OTR Westerns. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is March 27th, 1954, and the title is Blood Money. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers. And that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. I'm that dry I could fair spit cotton, Mr. Dillon. Oh, you can fill up at the Olifraganza when we get back to Dodge, Chester. Yes, sir. But right now, I'd settle for a drink of water. (laughs) You can't be that thirsty. I'm about to stampede. You think there might be a spring in that clump of elder up ahead? Yeah, there might. I swear next time I'm going to carry a water bag. And keep it wrapped in your pillow, I suppose, huh? You know, Chester, town life has made you mighty soft. That's far enough for... You've got a rifle, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Who are you, men? I were looking for water. Is there a spring in there? I said, who are you? What's your name? Matt Dillon. And I'm Chester Proudfoot. You don't worry me. And I never heard of no Dillon. Well, then you shouldn't mind if we got a little water. Okay. But you'll have to drop them gun belts first, one at a time. Sorry. You heard me. You can't shoot both of us, mister. Who is it, Harp? One of them's called Dillon. Dillon? From Dodge? You from Dodge? Yeah. That's what he says. Well, bring him in here. He'll help us. He's a U.S. Marshal. A Marshal? That's right, Harp. And instead of us standing here about to shoot each other, why don't you tell me why you need help? I'm Joe Harp, Marshal. Okay, Harp. Who's your friend? Harry Spiner. I never heard of him either. What's the matter? Has he been shot or something? I busted his leg. Oh. Well, there's a doctor in Dodge. I can't get him there alone. I will help you if you'll put that rifle down. Well... Okay. I found him lying out there on the prairie this morning. Horse throwed him and I drug him into the shade here. Uh, you mean you're not traveling with him? No. I just stopped to help. Are you really Marshal Dillon? I am. But uh, I don't remember you. I ain't never been to Dodge. I heard your name, Mo. You live around here, Spina? No, I've been working in a saloon down in Tascosa. Wanted to change, so I bought me a horse and rode north. But I shouldn't have come alone. I don't know nothing about horses. I hate them. Well, we better get you into Dodge. I suppose you aim to drag me to Dodge. Well, I've been drug as far as I'm going to be. Well, I had to get you out of the sun, Spina. It was mighty rough about it. Well, he saved your life, mister. Why shouldn't he save my life? Well, of 
all the ungrateful, mean temper he's, he's been like ever... that all day. But I figure it's because his leg hurts him. Of course it hurts. I busted mine once. I know what it feels like. Poor fella. You want to help get him into Dodge Harper? You want to keep going? No, no, Marshal. I kind of like to see Dodge anyway. Okay, then let's get busy. <laughs> Luckily, Spiner had broken only one bone in his leg, and after we rigged up a splint for it, we managed to get him mounted. It was night before we reached Dodge, but by the time he got there, he was too weak to complain. Anyway, I was more interested in Joe Harp, but all I could find out was that he was a cowboy, drifting aimlessly through the country like so many of his kind. He said he had a little money from his last job, and that's why he'd been so wary of strangers. And he seemed honest enough. As six weeks later, he was still in Dodge, gambling some, and making friends with most everybody in town. Doc and I were talking about him one day in the office. You know what he did, Matt, about three or four weeks ago? What, Doc? Why, he came and offered to pay Spiner's bill. He said the poor fellow wouldn't be able to work for some time. As long as he'd saved him, he felt he ought to help take care of him. Well, did you take his money? I did not. Spina can pay me himself. And he'd better get to work soon, too, because he's already walking around without a cane. I, uh, take it you don't like Spina much, Doc. Oh, do you? Well, nobody does that I know of. I don't believe he's even thanked Joe Hart for saving his life, man. Oh, there, Mr. Santa Fe just come in with the mail, Mr. Dillon. Hello, oh. Doc. Mm. Hello, Chester. Oh, see, that brown envelope looks official. It is. You want to open it now, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I better. It might have my paycheck in it. <laughs> Here you are. Thanks. No, no check. Just some new wanted circulars. What is it? Here, have a look, Chester. Oh, my goodness. Look at that, Doc. Huh? Let me see this. Let me see. Uh, wanted, dead or alive, reward $500 for bank robbery and murder while escaping. Joseph Harp. Joseph Harp? Age 32, Sandy here. Six feet tall, blue eyes. That's him, all right. Signed by the sheriff, city of Denver, Colorado Territory. You going to arrest him, Matt? Uh, can't you pretend you didn't get it or something, Mr. Dillon? You can stay here if you like, Chester. Oh, no, sir. I didn't mean that. All right, then. You take the Alifragasa, the Longhorn, and the Oasis. I'll look in this boarding house at the edge of town, then I'll come back to the Texas Trail. Meet me there, if you see him first. Yes, sir. All right, get moving. You look like you've been eating cockle burrs, Matt. Uh, I don't see Joe Harp around anywhere, Kitty. Mm. He left. Why? Has Chester got here yet? No. Is it trouble of some kind, Matt? I'm after Harp, Kitty. How long ago did he leave? Um, a little while ago. He was over there gambling, as usual, and then that Spiner came running in and said something to him, and they both left. Spiner. Somebody ought to take him out and bury him somewhere. Well, I couldn't find him nowhere, Mr. Dillon. Hello, Miss Kitty. Chester, what's this all about anyway? Harp's wanted for murder. For murder? Joe Harp? That's just what Spiner said when I told him. He just couldn't believe it. You told Spiner, Chester? Why, yes, sir. I went into him and I... I... Go get our horses, Chester. I'll pick up the rifles and hurry. They've had time to get out of town already. Mr. 
Mr. Dillon. What? My, I guess I just wasn't thinking when I told Spinner about Joe Harp. I didn't know he was going to run off and warn him. Next time I'll send you out with a potato rammed in your mouth. Yes, sir. Oh, I feel so bad. I wish you would. Oh, forget it, Chester. At least it shows Spinner isn't as bad as we all thought. I guess he was just waiting for a chance to do Harp a real good turn. Well, he sure did it. Hold it up a minute. Hmm? Oh, oh. Look. Hello! Why, it's Spinner, Mr. Dillon. He's got his hands up. Yeah. Come on. Get your rifle out, Chester, and keep your eyes open. Yes, sir. Now, don't shoot, Marshal. I ain't done nothing. Where's Harp? He's in that drawer behind me. Any tricks and you'll die, Spinner. I ain't no outlaw. And Harp ain't gonna pull no tricks, neither. You just follow me, Marshal. I swear I don't understand this at all, Mr. Dillon. Just follow him, Chester. Yes, sir. There's his horse. Yeah. And there he is. Well, he's been hurt. He sure has. Oh. Oh. Well, there's your man, Marshal. Did you do this, Spinner? I tried to talk him into giving himself up, but he wouldn't listen. And then he, he tried to draw on me. Spinner, I can tell from here the way he's lying that you shot him in the back. What difference it make? He's an outlaw, ain't he? Yeah. Five hundred dollars worth of outlaw, Spinner. If you live to collect it. Turn for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, the Red Cross campaign for this year is nearing an end. Have you answered the call? Remember, this year, the Red Cross needs you as well as your contribution. Go to your local Red Cross chapter, and while you're there, join and serve. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. <laughs> We buried Joe Harp on the prairie where he'd been killed and then rode back to Dodge. That night I wrote out a wire to the sheriff in Denver claiming the reward for Harry Spiner. Then I showed it to Spiner and told him to keep it quiet and also to stay out of my sight. And he did. And about a week later I had to send Chester to find him and bring him into the office. Here he is, Mr. Dillon. Come over here, Spinner. I've been waiting like you said, Marshal. I ain't talked to nobody. I had a wire from Denver this afternoon, Spinner. Everything's all right. The money will be here in another week or so. Oh. I thought it'd come now. There it is. But I, I thought you said it wasn't here yet. I'm paying you out of government funds. Oh. Well, that's fine. Yeah, I didn't think you'd mind very much how you got the money. Now, Marshal, I only done my... Count duty. it, Spinner. Oh, that's all right. I, I'm sure it's all here, Marshal. Count it, I said. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four, five. You're satisfied? Five hundred, that's right. Spinner, nobody knows about this yet. They think I killed Joe Harp. But before they learn who did and how it was done, I advise you to clear out of Dodge and stay out. Why? I didn't do nothing Tell wrong. me something, Spinner. Is Harp the first man you've killed? 
Of course he is. Well, there are men around here who've killed ten or a dozen and think nothing of it. But I won't guarantee how they're going to take to your having killed one man. They can't do nothing about it. It was plum legal. Yeah. Yeah, it was legal. I earned this money, and before I leave Dodge, I'm going to double it gambling. And there ain't nobody going to stop me. Okay, Spinner. I warned you. I'm going to get rich, Marshal. I'll show them. Real rich. Get out of here. I'm going. <laughs> Matt. Oh, thanks, Kitty. Drink? No, no, no thanks. Spina was in. Oh, is that so? He left, though. So. They closed the game on him when he started bragging about how he got his money. I kind of figured they might. Why'd you keep it such a secret, Matt? What were you protecting him for, that milk-livered little sneak? Now, the law doesn't separate people that way, Kitty. But now that he's been paid and he's been warned about what might happen, he's on his own. Well, I hope somebody does shoot him. Just think, Matt. It was Joe Harp who saved his life. I'd have caught Harp anyway, Kitty. I know. Somehow that's different. Yeah. That's a lot different. You know, Kitty, that's a pretty dress you're wearing. Close your eyes, Matt. What? Close them. Go on. Okay. What's this for? Now, tell me what color this dress is. Uh, well, it is... Uh, uh, it's blue, Matt. Blue, sure. I was just about to say that it is. I know. Speaking of colors, look what's coming. What? Oh, it's painter. Well, nobody shot him yet. Never too late. Marshal Dillon? Yeah. Marshal, I just tried to buy a drink over at the Alifragan. And they wouldn't serve you good. I'm not talking to you. Marshal, two men threatened to kill me right there at the bar. Now, that's funny. What do you mean? Well, most men around here don't waste much time on threats. Marshal, I demand protection. And I won't spend the night hiding in jail either. Okay. Then you'll come with me? No. What? I can't protect you any more than I have already, Spina. But I'll tell you one thing. If you take off your gun, nobody can claim self-defense for shooting you, and I'll have to go after him. If that's any satisfaction for you. Marshal, I'm a citizen, and I demand... Get out of town, Spina. Get out now. <laughs> Mr. Dillon? Yeah? Could you lend me a dollar? I went broke last night. Oh, uh, gambling, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Here you are, Chester. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. You told me you swore off gambling a week ago. You even took an oath. I did. I sure did. Well, then how come you went broke gambling last night? Uh, no, sir. I said I went broke, and you said gambling? And I said yes, sir, but I didn't say I was gambling. Chester, keep the dollar, just go spend it somewhere. Uh, yes, sir, but you don't understand. You see, I've got it all figured out. I swore off gambling all right, so what I do now is to hire a fella, and I give him the money, then he goes and sits in a game for Marshall me, you see. Dillon. Oh, hello, Clay. Marshal, what horse come back? What, what horse? The one Spinner bought off me when he left town. Well, Spinner's been gone five days, Clay. Why, well, no. But my horse come back, Marshal, alone. Saddle? Yes, sir. But it ain't my saddle. It's Spinner's. That means somebody must have caught up with him, Mr. Dillon. All right, we'll start looking for him. I can tell you where to look, Marshal. What? That horse has got red mud all over his legs. And there's only one place I know where he'd get into red mud around here. Now, that water and hole, Grandy Springs, huh? That's right, Marshal. Say... Do I get to keep the horse now? 
I don't know, Clay. I'll tell you when I get back. You know, I just had a thought, Mr. Dillon. What, Chester? Well, Granby Springs is only 30 miles. Spina must have made it easy the first morning he left. Uh, so? So, if he was killed there, how come nobody ain't found him and reported it yet? I don't know, Chester. That there it is, right over there. We'll soon find out. Yes, sir. That's him, Mr. Dillon. He sure looks dead. Yeah. I don't see no bullet hole. No. Hey, he's still breathing, Chester. Uh, go fill up your hat and throw some water on him, huh? Yes, sir. Spinner. Hey, Spinner. Spinner. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, pour a little on his head, Chester. Maybe that'll do it. That enough? Marshal. Marshal. Yeah, yeah. What happened, Spinner? Well, what's the matter? What happened? Horse kicked me. Kicked me in his belly. Busted me up inside. I hate horses. Oh, when did this happen? First day. I got off to get me a drink here. I hung on to the... to the reins. Till yesterday. That was too weak, Mr. Dillon. What? These fresh tracks all around here. Not just been made by that horse of his, neither. Sure, they're fresh tracks. What? Three or four men been by here. Three or four men? They, they just sat and looked at me, Marshal. They didn't say nothing. I didn't. Just sat and looked at me, and, and they rode off. Every one of them. They seen who it was, Mr. Dillon. That's what. Yeah. It's too late now, Marshal. I'm gonna, gonna die. Now, we'll try to get you back, Speeder. Uh, no. It's too... He's dead, Chester. Yes, sir. He wasn't as lucky as when he busted his leg, was he? But you'd think one of them riders might have helped him. You know, except for us, uh, I guess there isn't a man in the country who'd have helped him this time, Chester. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, James Nusser, and John Daner. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. (laughs) 
Later tonight, hear Herb Schreiner on Two for the Money. Remember, one for the fun, two for the quiz. Hear Two for the Money on most of these same stations later tonight. George Walsh speaking. Stay tuned for Gangbusters, which follows in a few minutes over most of these same stations. For mystery mixed with merriment, join Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evenings on the CBS Radio Network. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.